And let's do it. Let's do the thing. Hello! And welcome to a makeup video of sorts. So have you ever had this happen to you? You do all your planning to gather your makeup supplies. You do all of the packing. And you bring everything that you think you need. And you go through the checklist in your head over and over again. And you check. You double check. You triple check sometimes. And you go off to your destination feeling like, Oh, okay, I'm totally prepared for this. You do your prep work and then you realize you forgot your makeup brushes. Yeah, me too. Thankfully this doesn't happen to me very often, but on the off chance that it did, like the weekend I went to the Renaissance Fair recently, I wanted to bring my, like, good pack of makeup brushes, but for some reason I didn't have them. Or I couldn't find them, and it made me sad. But looking at what I did have, I was like, hmm, I could make this work. Maybe I could do something after all. Now, don't get me wrong, I had my cosmetic makeup brushes, and that would have been totally fine, and I was totally cool with doing that with, like, eyeshadow and stuff like that. But then I had paint involved. Like, makeup paint. And I wanted to do all this cool Celtic stuff, or barbarian war paint sort of stuff, and I didn't want to ruin my cosmetic brushes. So I looked at my supplies and I was like, hmm, I have these things I could possibly use. Maybe I could try that. So basically I'm making this video for like those times where you totally forget to bring your makeup brushes, but you may have other supplies with you. So here's one option that I actually did a few weeks ago that you could try too. And believe it or not, this is not the first time I've ever done this. I've probably, at least as far as I can recall, in my haunted house days, like year-round haunted house days, I have found myself in need of a quick thing to paint something on that was not my fingers, and I did not have my brushes nearby me or any other brushes, so I had to improvise. So the simplest way that you can do that, well, first of all, if you can prime your face, do that first, as always. Um... Anytime you have primer, you want to do that because it sets, like, your skin, it makes it, like, nice, and it makes it less likely for the makeup to clog into your pores. I mean, you don't have to use primer if you don't have it, but if you have it, I highly recommend it. But if you find that you don't have that, um, just at least moisturize your face. Like, you can use any lotion that would be good for your face. That could work, too. I've definitely done that a few times in my fairy days at the Renaissance Fair, where if I didn't have primer, I at least put lotion on, just as, like, a safe bet, basically. But as far as brushes are concerned, if you're really stuck on not having them, and you happen to have a bunch of these sponges, there's a few things you can do with them. And oddly enough, there's many things you can do with sponges with makeup application in general that kind of makes them your best friend. Especially when it comes to special effects makeup, but that's beside the point. So what I did with this look that I had a couple weeks ago, I basically... So you see, like, down the middle, like, right there, I basically tore this in half. Like that. So, it does a couple of things. One, now you have two sponges. Two, you have, like, these little, uh, stipply sorts of, um bits in there because like the inside of the sponge the texture of it so if you ever wanted to use it for like more textured stuff that's a really good use on top of that now you have a little edge so if you put the paint on that you can play around with different like strokes with that as if you had a brush so to give you an example of one of those options i usually when i do this i mostly use the flat end at least if it's like a general base layer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate it using this, which is, um, it's Maron Paradise Makeup, it's face and body makeup, uh, in green. It's water-based. And if you saw the picture I posted, um, that part that was under here on the two days that I had that makeup, that's what I did. So ideally you want a water, like, squirter thing, but if you have any source of water, it will do. For me, because it's my face, even if you have, like, a bottle of water, preferably one that somebody didn't drink out of, you can use that, but truthfully, you want to try to keep your stuff clean. So what I did is that after you wet it, you kind of, like, 
you can... What I would usually do is if I had water to spray in there, I would do that. But alternatively, you can do that. And then, what I have is painted in like this. Now, if you're going to do a barbarian look, you don't have to make it look perfect. Because it's war paint. War paint ain't pretty. Always. But, you can make it look pretty game cool. So what I did with this is that I painted basically under the lip. And then, I also painted sort of on my lip. It was going to go over with black lipstick anyway, but I decided to do it because for layer's sake. So, what I did. How precise you want to be is entirely up to you when it comes to messy looks like this. And actually last year I did a messy clown look that was intentionally supposed to be messy. Because it's a really good quick look if you need it in under 20 minutes. If you really wanted to get fancy with it, I guess you could do it around your eyes too, and basically anywhere else you wanted to. Um, as far as makeup around your eyes, you usually want to be careful with reds. Um, I can't remember specifically why, but I know reds you gotta be a little bit careful around the eyes. And to give you a little demonstration of what it could look like with the more textury stuff, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna use like the, um the inner spongy edge. So, like, say, for example, I had this right here, and then I decided to, like, tap, 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 tap. You can't really see it, and honestly, I would probably fuck around with the sponge more if I wanted a really big texture, but that's another option if you want something not as solid. I mean, if you spread it, it's gonna spread, like, thick. But, you can try, like, I would tear a few more holes on this if you really want, like, uh, spongy, like, um, what do you call it? If you want something more like a stipple sponge, which is like the ones that kind of look like the wire sponge that you would use in the, uh, bath, uh, not bath, bath, the kitchen sink, that's it. <laughs> hmm, don't scrub yourself with one of those, because that would probably really hurt. It kind of makes it look more like Swiss cheese. Um, I would say do that more for bruised looks, because that will definitely be your friend if you want more veiny texture, but if you want to go solid, that's fine. I'm also sort of realizing that I'm slightly going off points, but I'm going to go back to this part. <laughs> so, if you have the smaller end, so do you notice how on top it's kind of like up there? So, how thin you want the line kind of depends on how steady of a hand you have and how much of this edge you want to use. So, what I did was that I did dip the entire edge in, like, in black. This is, um, Maron Grease Paint Makeup in black. Um, so, this is, like, some typical black grease paint. It's, um, yeah, you don't have to activate it with water or alcohol, it's just there. So, I took this part and I dip it. Um, at least, like, enough so you see the color. Now, how thick you want the lines? When I did the first one that was all across this way, I definitely tried to have a steadier hand. Again, if it's war paint, it don't have to look perfect. But what I did is that I looked, and I'm using my viewfinder as a mirror, by the way. Now, let's say, with that, see what I have there? That's a little bit thicker. It's a little harder to blend because it's, like, chaotic. At least in my brain, it looks like it. If you want a thinner line, I'll demonstrate on my cheek here. I was going to try to do, um, just like underneath, so you kind of sweep it out. So that's one thing you can do. Um, you can also try just using the corner. So like, let's say... Nah, I fucked it up, but you can try using that. That's one thing you could possibly do. So, let's see. Take two. Better. Better. That's another option that you can have if you want, like... Obviously, the grip for this is pretty small, but... If you want to use the whole thing, that's fine. I ain't gonna say no. Um, but I like to, to try to save space and try to not waste more of the sponge. So that's a couple of ideas that you could. You can even... Hmm, you can even go nuts with, like, any sort of detail that you want. So, like, I did some of that. I did a little bit of that. 
So that was all across following this line this way. So that's what basically I did. Um, if all else fails with this and it's like kind of messy, one thing you can do is you can go over with either makeup remover, a wipe, um, depending on if you laid a base down or not. I didn't put any foundation on this time before doing this, so if that was the case, basically what I would do is I would probably sweep over with like a makeup wipe to like kind of smooth out the edges or play around with that a little bit. So that's a little thing that I would try. But if I did it over like a base already that I didn't want to get rid of, then I would be a little bit more careful. Um, I would also maybe, if you want to blend with your fingers, I don't see why not, at least on yourself, on another person, make sure your hands are clean for God's sake. Or at least whatever you find holy. Please, if you're going to do makeup on other people, make sure your hands are clean, you filthy animals. But yeah, if you ever want to try anything like that, don't be afraid to, because honestly, the worst thing that can happen is that you wipe it all off and you try again. That's what happens with makeup. It's a lot of trial and error. And sometimes it helps to practice a look beforehand, because if you just wing it, then you may not always be satisfied with the results, but also... It depends on the situation, because it's, if it's like for a job, then, you know, time is money, obviously, and things, shit's gotta get done. But if it's for something casual, like, yeah, you may want to meet a time crunch, give yourself enough time to play around with it. That's a big tip that I have, is give yourself time. If you think you know how much time you need, try to give yourself a little bit more, and you're gonna know better than anyone else of what you're gonna be able to do. On a side note, I'm also realizing that I just have, like, a bunch of lines here, and my hair is back, and all that, and it's kind of like, I feel like a crazy person. But not in a bad way. Like, just kooky. Quirky. Well, random XD. So yeah, if you ever find yourself in a pinch, don't be afraid to improvise. I think that's the main thing I was trying to say with this video. I wasn't exactly intending to make this video in, like, a while back, but then I figured, well, after this sort of experience I had, maybe it's good to encourage people to improvise and maybe show you that, hey, this is basically what I did to achieve the look that I was looking for. I really didn't use brushes except for cosmetics, so this paint was all done with sponge and paint. So, yeah. I don't have it here to show you right now, but you can also take a Q-tip and you can break it in half and you notice like the pointy end that's not the cotton swab. You can always use that to do little finer lines if you ever choose to. Just be careful and um, like don't press too hard that you end up impaling yourself or anything. I also really like using that to dip in and scoop up fresh scab for like bloody looks, but that's another story. And speaking of that, moral of the story is, like I said, feel free to improvise. Don't be afraid to do that as an artist. Honestly, art is subjective. And another big piece of advice I have is be mindful of your lighting. If you're in a haunted house setting, nothing has to be perfect if you're in very dark lighting. Because honestly, people go by pretty quick, they ain't gonna look at it for super long, and the lighting is really low, so you don't have to worry about the tiny little details all the time. So yeah, have fun with it, really. Makeup is meant to be fun. And just go nuts. Thank you so much for letting me use this as an opportunity to test out a format with this. Um, I will have more stuff like this and eventually go back to doing actual looks in the future when I'm not a forgetful piece of shit. And if you have any looks that you would like for me to try out or come up with something for, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I have a few ideas of my own. I'm thinking like a few um, ego stuff maybe, with, like, fandoms, but I'm also thinking of, like, characters as well. So, I'm rummaging through some stuff, and if you want to see anything in particular, let me know. Um, and, yeah, I look forward to the spoops, and I hope you guys are all having a good October and spooky time, and until the next one, bye everybody.